Whether it's a typical summer storm or the fierce winds of a hurricane, a number of weather factors can affect your electric service. If you plan on using a generator during storm season, there's a few precautions to consider. Most homeowners will try to keep it within the structure or close to the structure to secure the generator so that someone doesn't uh, steal it or, or run off with it. The problem with it is by bringing it close to the structure to secure it, you're actually creating a hazardous atmosphere for yourself and your family. Just like a uh, lawnmower or anything else, you would fill it up with the same uh, protocols as you would any gas engine. Make sure that you, uh, you know, have a vented space so you don't have any gas fumes. Put it out there where there's no problem with uh, gas bills. Once you have the generator filled up with fuel and ready to go, of course, when you start it, uh, then, of course, it's producing electricity. Now, most of your generators, especially for home use, are using are creating 120 volts and 240 volts. That's your, that's your single phase voltage that runs most of, uh, most of the uh, homeowner's appliances. Something that you want to look at here, most generators now, because of Underwriters uh, Laboratory, will have different type receptacles that are designed differently. As you see, there's a three-prong round receptacle that's for your 240 volt receptacles and the good thing about that is it keeps people from accidentally plugging in the wrong appliance into the wrong voltage now the hazard on the electrical side for most homeowners is that even though the manufacturers recommend that you plug the appliance directly into the generator typically that's not practical because the generator again you'd have to bring it almost into the home to run your refrigerator or a wall unit like air conditioning unit so typically people will run extension cords now, extension cords come in various different sizes, various different lengths. The issue with extension cords is the size of the conductor as well as the length of the conductor. Typically, homeowners will have real light-duty extension cords for Christmas lighting. But when you start drawing high amperage for air conditioning units, uh, refrigerator freezers, sometimes they can overload their extension cords. It has really two hazards. Number one, you can, by overheating, you can either cause damage to the generator or to the appliance that you're uh, trying to run. Number two is if it gets too hot, you, you are susceptible to structure fires. Wherever you purchase your generator, ask uh, the appropriate personnel on what size uh, extension cord that you should use. Questions typically will be, well, what appliance are you going to be using it for? How much wattage does that appliance run? If you can answer those questions, they can pretty well size up the right extension cord. <laughs> Once you have the, uh, the generator up and running, there's another hazard we really need to talk about, and that's what do you do with the extension cord and how do you supply that electricity to that appliance? Now, there's typically two ways that homeowners will uh, plug or have their appliances run off the generator with extension cords. Most people will plug the appliance pigtail cord right into the uh, extension cord and run it directly off the extension cord. And that's, that's the best way when running off of an extension cord, because then you have the generator, you have the extension cord plugged directly with the appliance. No problems there. What we have seen in the past, though, is some own homeowners will try to run more than one appliance. And sometimes what they'll try to do is they'll actually try to use their extension cord and wire the generator directly into their house wiring system. Now, that's very dangerous. If Number one, if you, if you wire your house incorrectly, you could create, again, another fire hazard for your structure, which would be catastrophic. Another thing that can occur is if you're back feeding that electricity coming from the generator through all your house wiring, that can actually what we call back feeding through the house meter. If that electricity back feeds through the house meter, which is supplied by the electric utility company, that voltage will actually travel down the service wire and actually go on to the electric utility uh, service grid, therefore exposing the general public as well as utility workers to, uh, to fatal levels of uh, voltage, up to and including 7,200 volts. Typically, if, if they, uh, to do this correctly, whenever you buy a generator and you do want to wire directly into your house wiring, the best way is to get a licensed electrician. Typically, what a licensed electrician will do is they'll install what's called a transfer switch or a disconnect switch. What that is, it's a piece of equipment that disconnects the voltage being produced by the generator from back feeding through the house meter and coming out to the electrical grid. In other words, it creates an open gap to keep that from happening. Yes, the same hazards apply to, uh, to operating this as you would with any gas engine. Uh, you don't want to fill it while the machinery is uh, running. You want to shut it down. In fact, if you can let it cool off, that's a good idea. In case you have any spills, obviously, gas on a hot engine could create a spark, could create a fire hazard. So again, and typically during the day, the homeowner will allow the generator to shut off for a period of time, to be honest with you, because a lot of times the noise is aggravating to them. So actually, for a few hours during the day when you don't necessarily need the electricity on, it's a good time to let the generator cool off.